are other masks that we can use yung mga commercial na cloth mask. However, their efficiency is not as good no, as a surgical mask or as an N95. Mm. Also, studies have shown Our thoughts and prayers are with those um, people affected by the Taal volcano and uh, the surrounding cities and provinces um, affected by the ash, uh, volcano ashfall. Um, hello everyone, my name is Malay and welcome back to my channel. Um, today uh, with us is again Dr. Ayan Gonzalez from the Department of Health, Health Head of um, Infectious Diseases. Uh, cluster. We're going to talk about the effects of volcano ash fall and then um, when to seek medical advice once you are exposed to it and how to properly wear the mask. Uh, Doc, good day. Hello. So, um, Doc, with the ongoing crisis in Luzon due to the eruption of the Al volcano, um, it is not new to us that here in Region 10, we have two active volcanoes, namely Mount Calayo, or known as Muswan Peak in Valencia, Bukidnon, um, which, last, uh, which erupted last 1886 or 1887, and Mount Hibok-Hibok in Kamigan. Uh, with this information, it is always best to be prepared. Um, first, uh, we would like to know, what is this volcanic ash? Um, I have heard that from a report this morning that it is worse than air pollution. So, um, why is it uh, dangerous to human being? Uh, volcanic ash can have different components. It will depend on the type of magma where it came from. So common materials that come out from volcanic ash include silica, carbon dioxide, and various other chemicals. So that's what makes it more dangerous because of the uh, variety, the type, and the volume also of the chemicals included in the ash. Mm -hmm. um, does it matter if it's long or short exposure, Doc? And uh, what is the span of time when you say it's short and long exposure? Okay. Um, yes, it does matter. Like, typically, if it's short exposure, like for just a few minutes no, or a few hours, it will not typically cause any problems. Um, what we worry about in short exposure are those with pre-existing conditions, for example, if they have asthma or they have arthritis, that is more worrisome. But if you don't have any other illnesses and you are uh, temporarily exposed to volcanic ash, typically it doesn't cause a lot of problems, especially if you wear personal protective equipment like a mask. Um, if it's a long-term exposure now, um, that's where the potential problems will come. Actually, there are not a lot of long-term studies done on volcanic ash exposure and its uh, possible conditions. But we can surmise no, na if at the short term, it can already trigger, for example, an asthma attack or an allergy attack for someone who is already an asthmatic, then in the long term, it will cause more problems. So uh, that's what we worry about. Uh, what is the effect of volcanic volcanic ash to human body? Um, I mean the 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 condition na pwede ma, ma experience a person when they are exposed to to volcanic ash. Uh, there are a variety of conditions. Um, first, sa eyes, no, it can trigger temporary irritation sa atong cornea no, if it comes into contact. Sa skin, especially for those with history of atopic dermatitis, it can also cause allergies or irritation sa skin. And the most dangerous thing we worry about is ang effect niya sa lungs. No? Um, like you mentioned, if they have uh, asthma or if they have COPD, they have any chronic lung disease, the volcanic ash can trigger an attack and can make things worse for them. Ah, okay. um, Doc, uh, what are the precautionary 
measures that um, a person or like especially now in Luzon, uh, they are talking about um, mass and all this stuff. Um, can you tell us the the total or the yeah the the, the measures that you sh uh, that one should 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 do practice. Or, uh, practice. Yeah, practice. Okay, well, number one, we should always listen to government authorities, you know, so if we are advised to evacuate a certain area, we should do so, because uh, the dictum when it comes to environmental exposure is, number one, to avoid or minimize exposure. So if the government says evacuate, you have to leave the area, we definitely have to go, because we don't want you to be exposed to all these dangerous ash and other chemicals. So, second, uh, if you cannot evacuate or delete man siya a place na nga evacuate but there is still some exposure, like for example in Metro Manila, you, know, uh, you have to as much as possible minimize the exposure. So, stay indoors, okay? When going out, you have to you know, wear the advice, personal protective equipment. Now, um, when it comes to wearing the, the mask, for example, uh, the best mask to wear is what we call the N95 no mask. Oh yeah. Uh, what is the difference, Doc, between N95 and surgical mask? The N95 mask means that the mask can, is able to filter 95% of particulates in the air that you breathe. So it's more efficient in filtering these chemicals compared to a surgical mask, a plain mask, which typically filters around 50 to 70%. So there are a couple of reasons why. Number one, the N95 mask has a more uh, efficient filter, no? so mas pino siya kumbaga. Second, it provides a complete seal around the nose and mouth. Unlike for a surgical mask, na naaman siya spaces around the side, on top, around the nose, so dili siya completely sealed. And so, uh, naapoy makalusot pa na chemicals. So that's the difference. Although for areas with not so not so heavy exposure like in Aras and Metro Manila, um, you can wear a surgical mask. Okay. No? However, if you're going there to Batangas or Tagaytay, for example, definitely have to wear the N95 to be better protected. Um, doc, uh, is there a proper technique in wearing mask? Uh, yes, actually for the N95 mask, especially for infectious diseases na apatay ginabuhat na na fit test no kasi um, it will depend on the curvature of the face the size of the head kung ano sa pud ang fitting nato sa mask so pag infectious diseases like you're facing um, measles influenza medyo mas strict ta na for environmental exposure actually wala guidelines so um medyo pwede ra ta mas lenient no since dili man siya makatapod for infectious diseases, for example, dapat ang mask after eight hours no, or after uh, one shift kung sa hospital, it discard ng siya. Pero kung, for example, kanisha sa exposure to ash, of course, pwede rin na to ma-reuse kung um, dilira siya visibly dirty. No? Kay uh, mahal po ang N95 na mask. Kung surgical mask, is cheaper na so as much as possible, single use lang din ang How about the surgical mask, Doc? Is there a um, proper way of wearing it? Um, does the color of the side of the mask matter? Actually, uh, it, 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 it does not matter. No, um, it's not true sa social media na kung you, you should face it's it blue. this way or yeah. face it that way. Kung blue. depende sa type of exposure ah, na gusto okay. na to. The colored side is always the side of, it's ah, always okay. the one outside, no? and then the plain white is always the one towards the face. Because besides the surgical mask, na asya water resistance ah. sa white side, no? Because surgical na for surgery, so the um, water resistance side mo na asya gawas. Okay, now we know. <laughs> um, in the absence of surgical mask or N95 uh, mask or N95, um, what are other alternatives to protect yourself from ash fall? Um, there are other masks that we can use, yung mga commercial na cloth mask. However, their efficiency is not as good no, as a surgical mask or as an N95. Mm -hmm. Also, studies have shown that wetting the mask does not actually contribute 
to the filtration efficiency. No? So a wet mask and a dry mask will pretty much filter the same way. No? Wetting is effective for, for example, we, we wet curtains kung grabe ka, baga ang ash, so that the ash will not go inside the house. Pero kung mask, uh, we do not need to do wetting sa mask. Um, last but not the least, Doc, um, if, you have, uh, if you are exposed to um, ash fall or your kids or uh, your family members, um, when to seek medical advice? Okay. Um, for minor irritation, for example, if you have some ash that goes to the eyes or the skin, you can just wash that with plain, clean water. No? However, if symptoms persist, of course, we have to consult a physician. For more severe symptoms like difficulty of breathing, no, especially if we have associated asthma or COPD, then we really have to go to the emergency room to get uh, medical attention. If in doubt, pa check up na lang. Okay. So there you have it, guys. Um, I hope you learned something today from Dr. Ayan Gonzalez. Doc, thank you so much uh, once again. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell icon beside the subscribe button below so you won't miss my next video. Once again, this is Melly. Thank you so much for watching. See you around, guys. Bye!